the uh, office, uh, central regional office of the police service, have detained a police officer, uh, General Sergeant Augustine Osuansa, over allegations of corruption. A video of the said police officer in which he is seen negotiating a bribe has gone viral on social media over the past few days. In a set footage, General Sergeant Osuansa is seen taking a large bundle of cash after a hearty conversation. The policeman was heard saying that as a principal, he does not protect or pocket all monies he takes as bribes from suspects in the area as uh, he always makes sure he settles every officer including the commander. Central Regional Police Public Relations Officer DSP Irene Opong says the officer was negotiating and receiving money in a cyber crime and narcotic case. The regional police has meanwhile appealed to persons with credible information in the case to contact the regional crime officer. I have ways here. Meet my boy here. See, see, see. My boy here will be on duty. Me, I will say. I will not be. We will not be on duty. Look at me. Me, me, me. I will pray for you. Look at me. Let me know. For you, me, I like you. So, you are not going to go. I am going. Okay. I am just going. Hello. Very incredible police officer saying, say now, nah, sopi 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 na na ye I mean, in literally meaning that we've been taking peanuts all this while. Let's uh, get to speak to uh, Dr. Justice Tenkebe. He's a lecturer in criminology at the Institute of Criminology, University of Cambridge. His uh, expertise is also in the field of policing, legitimacy, and police practice, trust and confidence in the criminal justice, corruption, sentencing, decision-making, and uh, criminal justice reforms, as well as uh, restorative justice program evaluation and evidence-based crime prevention. I'm saying all of these so you can know that uh, we take this matter pretty serious. Uh, Dr. Tenkebe, we're grateful you're joining us. Hello, sir. Yeah, hello. We're grateful you're joining us. Uh, you must have seen these videos. Uh, to me, they're disgusting and they are a very sore reflection of the challenge within efficient policing in Ghana. Your initial thoughts? Oh, um, thank you for having me. I, it, this is just another instance of uh, police, uh, apparent police uh, involvement in misconduct. Uh, unfortunately, uh, police corruption is uh, a global problem. Uh, there isn't any police force that is immune from this. And indeed, I can read you a story about the New York Police Department just last week, and you'll be amazed that there is such corruption even uh, in one of the most important global cities. So it's a major problem uh, globally that the nature of the police work necessarily lends itself to some of these uh, uh, challenges. And we know that uh, police corruption uh, is uh, one of those factors that undermine public confidence in the police. And so the challenge for us isn't just that there are some of these instances that might uh, catch our attention, but how do we respond? How do we manage police officers in ways that reduce uh, reduces uh, the their vulnerability uh, to some of these temptations now, talking about response uh, you've you've just mentioned uh, response and the police have taken some ash action it has uh, started uh, investigating this has uh, arrested this officer and the processes have begun but most often the police service is accused of shielding its own are you satisfied uh, the way they're beginning to handle this particular one um well if you look at the police's i mean this takes us to the issue around uh, how do we hold officers to account and yes, we need to have some internal administrative 
mechanisms, uh, which the Ghana police uh, uh, do have, they, um, and they have been investigating and taking action against uh, police officers. Uh, so I encourage you, for example, to look at their annual reports, and you will see a range of administrative uh, sanctions against some of the officers uh, who have been involved in, in corruption. But of course, internal mechanisms alone are not sufficient. We need an external accountability arrangement. And so, 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 Doc, this external accountability arrangement you're talking about, which form should it take to enable it be as effective as you would expect? I think it could take the form of what we have with Isaiah Shraj, but not with a, a kind of um, multiple mandate, just focusing as uh, specifically on the police, an external institution to which citizens could lodge their complaints, an institution that would automatically start its investigations. It doesn't need to wait for uh, the police service to refer a case to, to it. It will start automatically to investigate any cases of serious police misconduct. But its job isn't just about investigating misconduct, but also bringing greater innovation and uh, encouraging evidence-based interventions in dealing with police misconduct. Look, one of the things we like to say in Ghana is that when we have instances like that, we immediately say, oh, uh, bad nuts, rotten apples uh, in the police service. But we need to move away from that kind of approach to say the problems or the reasons officers get into these kind of situations are institutional. It's the nature of the police's work. And therefore, what can we do? How can we manage our police officers? How can we organize the police work in a way that reduces uh, their vulnerability to corruption? Unless we are willing to do that, uh, we will not be able to solve the problem. If you continue to blame individual, I'm not saying that uh, this officer, if he's, he's not to be blamed as an individual, no. He is obviously in, put himself in a situation which is... Um, uh, against the ethics and, and, and the professional code of conduct that governs police work. No question about that. But why do things like that happen? And we will find that they happen because of poor supervision, they happen because of poor training, they happen because uh, we are not really paying attention to how officers exercise their discretion. Mm -hmm. And the what, more we are, are able to deal what with are your issues, what are your expectations of uh, the outcomes of the action the police service has started? From what I know, uh, I think we can be assured that the police would investigate the case. Uh, they would take action against the officer if he's found guilty. And I think we need to know what exactly happens to right. that officer. Right. Uh, it's not enough that the administrative sanctions are applied if officers are found uh, guilty of an offense, and we don't know about those cases. If we don't, then our confidence in the police might be affected. And I think transparency in, in dealing with cases like this will be important. And it's right. good that the police have reacted swiftly. Look, when it comes to deterring people from offending, whether they are police officers or they are civilians, the most important factor is that they know that when they engage in misconduct or they engage in crime, the will they will applied. be caught right, and the uh, sanctions would apply. Right. Uh, Dr. Justice Tenkebe, we're grateful for your time. Dr. Tenkebe is a lecturer in criminology at the Institute of Criminology at the University of Oxford. Uh, let's uh, go on our social media pages and take a look at some of the issues that we have posted. We posted that Sergeant Augustine um, of Asimfosu Police Division was caught on video allegedly negotiating for payment and receiving bribe from uh, associates of a criminal uh, suspect to make foolish a narcotic and cyber crime case he was handling and we're asking the question does this dent the image of the police service let's look at what you're saying uh, and this one uh, from Adam. Adam says that he's just confirming what we all know in secret. It's actually no news to me. Uh, thank you, Adam. And then Abakisi, and uh, you say that the police have destroyed their image long time ago. Oh, we have a long way to go. This must be in our genes. Uh, that's uh, Kofi Te Kofi.
coffee terrier there. So those were your, some of your views that we were able to take. I'm Stephen Ante. This is News at 10.